Well guys, welcome back once again to the hillside. This nice balmy 63 degree December 27th here in zone 6B7A, which is unheard of. Um, you know, this this winter has never really shown up. We had a couple, had a week where it was like super cold and a couple of days about, you know, last week we had two or three really cold days, but now it's been in the 60s. It was, I think, 71 degrees yesterday. And for the next week, we have no sign of, of anything even remotely close to normal temperatures. I mean, one day I think it's going to be 68 degrees, uh, two days from now, and it's just going to rain uh, with this little jet stream, this, you know, just funneling all this atmosphere, moisture in from the south. But uh, it's no end in sight, uh, which is a good thing. You know, if you don't like being in the cold and snow and ice and all that kind of stuff, well, I mean, this might be your kind of winter. However, I've done videos on this before, and I'll just kind of briefly touch on it. A lot of your plants, they need winter, okay? They need the cold snap. They need the dormancy to function right, to produce fruit, to flower, to do uh, all the things they need to do to set their biological clocks correctly. Now, here's what I'm having this issue with this year. Check this out. So this is a planter, and I put a bunch of crocus bulbs in here and um i re ordered them late i received them late and they should have been you know i thought maybe in the ground like october but they went in like a week or two before thanksgiving okay so like mid-november for those outside the united states um uh yeah so we've had this such warm temperature and these guys have already started to sprout okay so conventional wisdom tells you you need to mulch these guys up to kind of help prevent any kind of damage because you know these these sensitive tips are going to grow up and they'll be really delicate and we'll get a nice cold snap come through or just a normal temperature you know comes through those tips are going to be damaged by the cold well so i had these mulched up with some leaves and they're doing good and then i noticed that they were growing through the leaves so uh kind of contrary to what i just said to myself about you know, mulching it, I'm actually going to be pulling the mulch off of these because I don't want these to be excessively insulated, all right? I want this to be just, I mean, let the temperatures be what they will. I can't make it any colder, but these guys are going to grow, and uh, there's no end in sight to this warm stretch until next week um, where we're going to get back down to, like, the low, high of, like, 36, lows in the, like, low 20s, so back to actually a little bit below average. But when that day comes around, I'm gonna heavily, heavily mulch this with leaves. I got some some old uh, rotting, uh, decomposing straw bales I'm kind of standing beside right here. I use that for mulch in the gardens. But yeah, so uh, if you've ever had this before, uh, you know, a lot of gardeners have a lot of years of experience. Um, you know, I probably in hindsight, maybe I should have kept those flower bulbs in the uh, freezer, the refrigerator for a while to kind of simulate winter and planted these out. But I mean, when I planted them, it was cold and we had days when it was down in the teens highs never got above like 35 it feels like winter set in and then all of a sudden this like practically three weeks of just crazy crazy above average temperatures i mean just check this out right here Like this huge patch of oregano look how healthy this is look at that we got a lot of oregano okay this oregano last year winter time i mean it'd be all sad and kind of losing its uh flavor i mean just rubbing your fingers on it man the the oils are still there. It still smells like fresh oregano. So it's an awesome, awesome smell. But uh, like I said, last year we had snow and ice and this oregano was covered in, you know, just ice and was sad and, you know, waiting for springtime to really pop up. And it's never actually really went dormant. It's never really went to sleep. I think it's actually still trying to put on new growth, even as we speak here towards the end of December. So maybe uh, January, February, it's going to kick back in. But, you know, uh, you never can tell. I mean, my grandpa told me stories about back in the 70s or you know, late 80s. He's actually remembered uh, playing golf every day in January in a T-shirt. I mean, just every now and then. I think this is an El Nino year. Uh, it throws off the, uh, you know, the, the jet stream and things like that. And way up north, it's been super cold. They're getting tons of snow. And we're just getting the beneficiary of like this um, atmospheric, uh, you know, warm temperatures from, uh, you know, down south in the Gulf of Mexico and Texas and that kind of pushing up this direction. So anyways, let me show you another couple things I'm kind of dealing with here and talk about that over here at the other side of the garden. All right, y'all, any guess what this might be? If you said garlic, you might be close. This is actually elephant garlic, okay? The kind of a cousin of the actual true garlic. It's in the uh, the leek family. But check this out, man. It is already, I have been mulching it. As you can tell, all this straw mulch, it started popping up earlier. I mulched it deep and it's popped back up and I can't stop it from growing, okay? Um, this might be a problem for several reasons if you've grown garlic or leeks, or leeks, or um, elephant garlic in the past. 
it actually needs super cold temperatures and so many chilling hours and so much temperature below so much time below a certain temperature is what i'm trying to say in order to actually divide or trigger like uh, the forming of cloves okay so last year i grew this elephant garlic and it didn't really get that cold last year either and i didn't have the divisions i had just one big solid bulb okay which is still tastes fine you can still cook with it it's fine but if you want your elephant garlic to big divide into those big old cloves you need the cold temperatures all right so i'm doing everything i can here but i think that where i've been mulching it and it's gotten warm it's just it's just triggering this this garlic to keep going i mean check it out all the way down this double row right here i mean i thought that this would be uh you know a good crop i planted it on time i planted it like you know early november like you're supposed to and it just it just got warm and so this elephant garlic is growing so i mean maybe next year unless we have something drastic come through i'm gonna have to mulch this up and keep trying but um once we get some super cold temps i might have another year where my elephant garlic just doesn't divide and then i'll have to start all over again with uh you know next year trying to trying to divide it out and grow it and see what i can do and kind of propagate the uh my stock here but like i said it still tastes fine it still tastes exactly the same you're just not going to divide your clothes therefore being able to divide you know the one bulb turns into four or five but then you replant that and you can actually exponentially increase the amount of garlic or elephant garlic in this case is what i'm trying to say is i'm trying to actually increase this from just a small amount of bulbs i was given i'm trying to develop a, a much bigger seed stock therefore i can take it out to the farm and really try to propagate this and uh, produce it on a larger scale so let's go ahead and go to the front show you some other stuff that's going on that's all wrong hey before we go around front let me show you this here this is some uh butter crunch lettuce it's actually trying to bolt a little bit where it's been so warm but i picked some leaves off this earlier and it still tastes just fine it's it's not quite as crisp and as fresh as you would get it in you know, the spring in the proper growing uh, season as there's just enough daylight in, in the day to kind of keep it you know as vibrant as possible but anytime you can come out in late december and pick a fresh salad it's a good thing all right let's go ahead and continue the wrong tour all right so you might recognize this flower it is the hellebore um like i said this is december 27th and it is in full bloom which is awesome which is awesome i mean i love these blooms i love this plant deer don't like it that's, that's another bonus tip but it flowers but typically this doesn't even start flowering till like late february early march as it is you know one of the first if not the first flower you're going to get in your garden which is why a lot of gardeners do love this plant but it's basically started blooming at the beginning of december and it's bloomed all through um, which i guess you know has the nickname as the christmas rose or the linton rose but not in this climate. I mean, maybe other places where it's more clim climatically appropriate that it should be blooming. Uh, in my experience, I've never had it bloom this early. So maybe the temps have something to do with it. Maybe it's like the cycle of the sun or something that the plants just know that we don't, we can't really comprehend because we just, you know, base everything off of a 30-day uh, a calendar and what should be because, you know, some book says that on this date, this should happen. But, you know, there's things like that. These old farmer's almanacs and these things are around for a reason. All that accumulated knowledge from all the years. I mean, obviously it, it meant something. And uh, this is my other hellebore right here. This one, however, is not blooming. And it's not nearly as big as the one next to it. So this one, um, maybe this one is just not on the same cycle as this other one, which is just so much bigger. Maybe, I don't know. But let's go ahead and take you around to the front and show you a couple more things that are out of season. All right, on the next uh, contestant up on the you're growing at the wrong time, uh, this is rosemary. Yes, the culinary herb rosemary. It's December 27th, and it is in full bloom. I don't know why. Uh, there are obviously no pollinators this time of year, but it's just this one little section of the plant right here that is in bloom. As you look at the rest of the two plants here, that's kind of grown into a little shrub. Uh, there are no other blooms on it except for, well, like right down over here. There's a couple more sporadic blooms, but I don't know why, but the rosemary is blooming in late December. Um, I don't know. It has, it, it's, everything is just so out of whack this, so far this year. So let me just kind of pan over here, kind of uh, show you what I got going over here. It's my wild blueberries, in case you've ever seen that old episode. They're doing great. They're the nice fall color on your uh, the wild blueberries here. Check it out. And the leaves are finally starting to fall off. But check it out down in here. These, I believe, are my wild, or the uh, wild tulips, I believe. Like the native, like the non, you know, the, the, the wild version of the tulip. They're popping up. Hopefully they don't get too ahead of themselves and start actually trying to bloom. But these are not your typical... 
I said tulip. I'm not sure. They might be a wild iris of some kind. I, I really forget what they were. They were given to me a long time ago. And they have some awesome blooms on them. Don't get me wrong. They're pretty cool. But they're not like the big showy blooms like you get from, you know, like the big box stores, all these big vibrant crawlers you're, you're probably used to seeing along the way. But uh, let me go ahead and wrap it up here. Let me show you one more thing. The last thing I'll show you about what is growing out of season and what everything is just just so confusing this year and i'll uh, kind of wrap this video up as it is getting a little bit long-winded okay so for the last stop on this tour of everything growing at the wrong time these are the black mulberries okay i got these these three little plants here i bought them last year in the spring put them in these containers and they did absolutely nothing they did not grow at all like they just kind of sat there they're healthy they're green they put on maybe a few leaves did not do anything now it is december and what do we have we have new growth right there you see it kind of coming out right in there a new growth coming through yeah it's budding out okay this plant here next door budding out as well this one here is actually flowering yes this mulberry tree is flowering i have absolutely no idea how this got so wrong it, maybe these plants were kept in cold storage uh you know, for longevity reasons, or they took it out and the, the you know, just uh, the dormancy cycle is jacked or something. I don't know. I know these flowers here are doomed. They're not, if they try to produce, they're probably, I mean, mo more than likely they're, they're, they're done. I'm really worried about this growing tips like this coming through. Uh, we get a nice cold snap. Like I said, next week, we got predicted temperatures down to like 21 or 22. I don't know what else to do. I can try to cover these guys up with some mulch or some some straw or something, wrap them up around it, but that's just going to, you know, prolong the uh, the cold from setting in. Eventually, inevitably, I mean, we are going to get some kind of winter. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe this year we just have the uh, the anomaly where the jet stream just does its craziness and whatever cycle the weather is we're going through just eliminates the, uh, the, the real cold winter of any kind at all. I mean, best case scenario maybe we get a nice uh, deep snow and the snow actually will insulate it and kind of keep it from being damaged by the cold so snow is not always a bad thing i made a video about that do check that out i'll try to leave a link if i can remember but i put this video out for you guys to see so there you go that's just my tour of everything late december that is growing when it shouldn't be some anomalies some tips uh let me know how it's going for you guys in your garden i mean i'm sure i'm not alone i'm sure everywhere you know around this this uh zone 6b 7a mid-atlantic kind of east coast area uh appalachian region uh, i'm sure you guys have some weird stuff going on too do leave some comments down below tell me what is going on in your neck of the woods all right guys until next time here at the hillside i'll be uh i'll be out here uh, apparently in a t-shirt gardening in late december but you know last year we had an ice storm i remember on christmas eve and it was freaking cold so you know what a difference one year makes all right guys until next time if you like this please consider subscribing love to hear from you and see you guys next time all right then bye bye